Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about how big is Skewer's number. So the reason that um, I haven't made a video about Skewer's number is because first of all, um, number file already did a video on this number and I think that was a very good num uh, very good video about this number. And second, um, this number is, I mean, it's not very big. And of course, compared to Graham's number or even G1, it's very small, as you can see over here. So uh, it's relatively uh, straightforward number to understand. So that's why I didn't make a video of this until now. But of course, I mentioned this number in my big number rankings video. Um, but anyway, let's talk about skewers number. So skewers number is actually um, the biggest number ever used in a uh, proper mathematical proof before Graham's number. So of course Graham's number was the biggest number uh, ever used in a mathematical proof back in the 1970s. And before Graham's number, the biggest number ever used in uh, math is skewers number. So again, it's a quite famous number, just like Graham's number. And um, you know, back then, back in 90, the 1930s and 1950s, they were the biggest number ever used. So it's kind of like a celebrity number. It's not a makeup number or not an arbitrary number like the Google, Googleplex. Um, but anyway, the so first uh, skewers number is 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 34. So of course, very big. If you compare the numbers in astronomy, it's way bigger than that. Um, but of course, much smaller than something like G1. It was um, proven in a proof in 1933, uh, assuming the Raymond hypothesis is true. So of course, I'm not going to explain that here. You can look it up yourself. And then the second skewers number is 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 964. It's a much bigger number than uh, the first one. And it was proven without assuming the Raymond hypothesis. So it's a much bigger number. It was proven in 1955. So what is Skewer's number? So Skewer's number is actually uh, kind of like Graham's number. It's an upper bound for something, for a uh, problem in mathematics, which uh, is related to uh, counting the number of prime numbers that is bigger than or, I mean, that is smaller than or equal to a particular number. For example, let's say a million, you're trying to find how many prime number that is uh, smaller than or equal to a million. So within a million, how many prime numbers are there? So that's what you're trying to find. And of course, there's a uh, function called the logarithmic uh, integral function that is used to estimate the actual number of primes within uh, smaller than that number. So that uh, I mean, the, this one, the prime counting function is the actual number of primes uh, smaller than or equal to, uh, to that number. So it, in this case, x is that number. For example, you can use a million or a billion. So you're trying to, trying to find how many primes that is smaller than uh, or equal to a billion. So a billion would be the x over here and also in here, but uh, the logarithmic logarithmic uh, integral function is tr is used to um, estimate the number of primes and it turns out it's is a pretty accurate um, estimation at first it turns out that it seems like the um, this function over here is always overestimating the actual number of primes so uh, people is just assuming this might always be uh, overestimating but actually, of course, in 1933, it was proven that that's not the case. That's not true. So eventually, the sign flips. So at some point, um, actually, the logarithmic integral function, the estimate, is actually smaller than the uh, prime counting function. So of course, they're trying to find out when does that occur? When does the sign, this equality sign, first flips? So of course, it they have proven that the sign first flips under this number or below this number. So that's why this is the upper bound for this to occur. It turns out it's uh, 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 34, which is very, very big. So again, this is kind of like Graham's number. It's just an upper bound of a 
uh, mathematical problem. It's not a, an actual answer to this uh, problem. Actually, I, I think even until now, they still haven't found the correct uh, answer. They only have some kind of upper bound. Um, so, um, I believe currently, they, of course, they improved the upper bound quite a bit since 1933 and 1955. Right now, I think the uh, upper bound has been reduced to 10 to the power of 316, which is still a big number, much bigger than a Google, uh, but of course, much, much, much smaller than this num these two numbers over here. Um, and it also, it turns out that uh, this, this equality signs keeps flipping for infinitely many times. So let's say once they reach this number and the sign flips, but actually after a while, this sign flips again. So it becomes, it's again overestimating and then it's underestimating and then again overestimating and the sign keeps flipping for an infinite number of times. So it's kind of interesting problem and idea um, so anyway so how big is uh, skewers number of course uh, you can say it's very big of course it's very big but again relatively is not big <laughs> compared to other big numbers so of course the first skewers number is you can you can see clearly is much bigger than a googleplex so googleplex is already quite big of course so it's much bigger than that but then of course it's much smaller than the Google Plexian, or some people call that the Google Plex Plex. So it's 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 100. And then the second skewers number, of course, is bigger than the Google Plexian because it's 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 964. Uh, but this number, the second skewers number, in turn, is smaller than 10 to the 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 1.1, which is the Poincaré recurrence time for a super, super inflationary universe. So anyway, this is the biggest number ever appear in physics or science. Um, so the second, even the second skewers number is still smaller than that. But of course, it's bigger than these numbers over here. Um, but again, this is back then, I believe they said there's no computers yet. So this is a really big number back then. And of course, it's the biggest number ever used in a mathematical proof. But anyway, this is how big is Gilbert's number. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.